In this video, I will explain how to make a set of 2D drawings from a 3D model. Since I expect this to be quite a long video, I will post links to the different sections in the description below so that you can easily find uh, the spots that you need more info on. So what will we be discussing in this video? Uh, we start with how to make a flattened version of your 3D model using Unroll Serve, using Make2D to generate 2D drawings of your 3D file, as well as alternative uh, methods to make a drawing without using this Make2D conversion. Next, we will talk about uh, dimensioning parts and using different line widths in your drawing I will be sharing a template Rhino file that has dimensions set correctly for a moderately sized object. It makes use of a free font called DDIN and I will give links to download that font as well. So when making technical drawings uh, we make pages that contain a so-called title block and the template for that will be shared as well. Finally, we will also be looking at ways to deal with drawing information on pages using the Detail Layer Manager and specific layout commands. So that is it for the main part. So let's get started with uh, the first part, looking at how to make flattened versions of your 3D model. So I'm assuming that you have a final 3D model of your sheet metal project and we want to create manufacturing drawings of those using Unfold. And as mentioned uh, during the lessons, we use Unroll on the inner surfaces. Uh, so the inside surfaces of the sheet metal are the ones that are used for unfolding. Um, these surfaces I have separated on a different layer here and since all the uh, legs are unique we only have three different parts to unroll. Uh, so let's uh, activate surfaces for unfold here and uh, remove the other layers from visibility. So we have our uh, inner leg, outer leg and seed. So if I unroll this with unroll serve, by default it says explode yes, and that means I get something like this, and that is not what I want. Instead, I want to make sure explode is set to no, and then I get my correct 2D drawing. Do that also for the inner leg and for the seat. Now, if you are going to study this file, then you will see that the um, drawings that I have on the, uh, the layouts, uh, they use these cut lines and fold lines like that. And that I will do um, using duplicate border and duplicate edge so running the border will duplicate all the outlines and therefore the cutting lines of a model and then i um, move that to my cut lines and using dub edge i will duplicate these fold lines onto my fold lines layer like that. Uh, so if I now uh, delete this one, then you will see we have the same drawing as this one. 
So I will do the same for these two. So dot border. Uh, move that to cut lines. And then running dub edge. On the fold lines. And then I can delete those. Um, if you look uh, at the actual drawings, then you will see that um, uh, these uh, drawings ha have been put in a horizontal orientation. So that's what I want to do also for these drawings. You see an older version of it where it was still rotated. Uh, these I can actually delete. So let's have a look at uh, the actual 2D drawings just made. Do that in one of the orthogonal views, in this case the top view. And I want this to be in a horizontal orientation. So I can do that by rotating from the midpoint and endpoint like that. Doing the same here over this axis. Let's have a look at how to generate a 2D drawing based off your existing 3D model using the make 2D command. When you run that command, make sure you only select those objects that you want to include in your drawing and then run Make2D. I generally choose the third angle projection as this will generate a top view, a front view, a right view and a perspective. And then choose my object properties by output layers and that means that they will be generated on uh, specific make 2d layers using visible lines hidden lines and uh, scene silhouette curves uh, so those i check the tangent lines tangent edges hidden lines scene silhouette and then run make 2d then rhino starts calculating those drawings and this can take quite a bit of time depending on the complexity of your model. If your model is very, very complex with uh, a huge amount of rivets, then it's also totally fine to leave those rivets out of your uh, Make 2D drawings. Uh, as you will notice, this is going to take quite a bit of time. And therefore, I will pause this video and then once the Make 2D drawing is complete. I will resume. So the make to d process has been completed. As you can see, it took quite a bit of time, about one and a half minute. And after the command has been done, the drawing still is selected. And while this is selected, I switch to my top view and move these drawings a little bit out of the way. So if we uh, uncheck the visibility of our hidden lines and curves, we end up only with the uh, scene silhouette curves. You can see that um, Rhino has a difficult time with these silhouettes. They often uh, are not completely fully drawn. Uh, so sometimes it means that you need to do a little bit of manual work for making complete silhouettes, unfortunately. And that's what I did in, uh, in this file that I am sharing with you. So that being said, let's have a look at the dimensioning of this drawing. So generally you include this type of drawing just for uh, the overall view of the model and therefore only the main dimensions should be included. Main dimensions meaning the 
total width of your product and total depth and then of course also the height of the product you can snap to uh, existing dimensions to keep it a little bit clean and that kind of concludes this part of the creation process of 2d drawings a small note about line widths what i am using in this file is a 0.35 print width for all the uh, thick lines and then default for the rest now normally you don't really see that in your drawing when you're zooming in so you cannot really see the difference between the lines and it is possible to um, to toggle that with this command here uh, I changed this a little bit uh, to toggle between on and off so if I click it it's set to on and right click it it's set to off in Windows it's easy to do this by uh, right clicking while holding the shift key and in this case I've put this into my command and by default it's just print display on the left mouse button and none on the right but I change it to print display state on enter for left and off enter for right so toggling it on you can see that um, the scene silhouette curves uh, are 0.35 and that is also the main reason why I spend a little bit of time completing these silhouette curves because there were a few lines missing next let's have a look at dimensioning these parts we just created I'll move them out of the way a bit make sure you have a separated a special layer for dimensions I call it dim and, and make sure that layer is active and then uh, firstly I will make the main dimensions of the uh, boundary like that when you make dimensions make sure that annotation style is set to uh, din uh, so if you make use of the, uh, the provided template then you will automatically have this uh, dimension style active so the main outer dimensions for uh, the, the base sheet that you will cut and then uh, dimensioning the cutouts and the fold lines and we could do that on both sides like so now you could uh, argue uh, if we need to and I mentioned these holes as well um, it depends a bit um, if you look at the 3d file then uh, if you would manufacture this then you'll see you will have to place the uh, legs that have holes onto the uh, seat and there will be some inaccuracy in, in manufacturing no matter how precise you work uh, so if you think you're going to drill the holes based on the holes that are in the legs then it makes no sense to uh, dimension those holes because they will uh, just be a result of the holes that are placed in the legs uh, so for therefore we will in this case just leave that and just dimension the holes in the legs instead 
Okay, so um, the other part looking, we will be looking at is the auto lag. As you can see here, I'm dimensioning them from the boundary of the, the base sheet. And actually, you see that here also. So the main dimension and the main dimension in height, the half of the height, and then the height of the uh, smaller end here. Uh, when you would extend this line all the way up to the boundary. Uh, that makes it mo much more accurate to make this part. Uh, if we would dimension this small part here, uh, there is no reference left, right? So basically you want to have the uh, intersections with the boundary um, and dimension those, and those are easy to uh, to line out once you start building that actual part. Now the reason why uh, we dimension the holes from one point here is that that also leads to more accuracy. Uh, if you would dimension all the holes between each hole and you would drill one hole incorrectly, then all the subsequent holes that you drill from that uh, hole will also be inaccurate. Uh, so this is a much more accurate way to make sure that you have the least amount of um, difference between what you actually write down and manufacture. So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, if you dimension holes, you should always do that from their center. Uh, sometimes what I see is that people are dimensioning something like this. Uh, let's see. And that is not correct because uh, if you are going to drill a hole, you will want to drill that hole from its center. Uh, so the center of the hole is the actual important point. Uh, so if we want to dim dimension these uh, holes here, well, let's actually do that on this part here. then I could make a helping line from this center all the way up to this center. Press tab to continue the line. And then make a aligned dimension. From the center. Of this hole and then perpendicular to this hole to this edge here. And that will be 7.5. And um, if we make a bounding box here, then we can also make dimensions for the hole positions. Like that. and so forth. So let's make this page from scratch first using the existing drawing that we just created. If you don't have any uh, tabs on the bottom left, it means you don't have any layouts yet. So if I type layout, Then it will bring me this dialog box that enables me to make a new layout. 
and uh, the page name is not really important at this moment you can always later on change that what is important to, is to uh, choose Rhino PDF and then choose the A3 landscape size the initial detail count that's uh, going to be left at 1 and then uh, by default Rhino will include everything that is in the viewport on to your sheet so this rectangle here is the container for all the uh, drawing information and if you double click on it it will activate the view and uh, that enables me to zoom in and out on certain objects so if I want to include this on my drawing I would zoom on that selection and then double click again to uh, get out of that detail I highly recommend to uh, keep every detail on a so-called details layer and I've made one here so change that object layer by the way these uh, borders will not print so if you want to include lines on your drawing you should draw them manually but in this case I don't want these drawings to be visible these border lines because I will include my own title block at the moment the scale of this one is rather arbitrary and every detail needs to be scaled on a fixed scale like one on one one on two one on five one on ten etc so in this case the uh, closest scale is going to be one to five so if I select the detail and open the properties I get to change the scale here once your scale is uh, correct it is recommended to lock that detail so that once you uh, enter that detail you cannot accidentally modify these dimensions so once that is in place I can still uh, modify the size of my bounding box Uh, so note if I turn on control points here and I would move this it will just crop that drawing uh, and it will not scale or modify it in any other way so we have this drawing in place and next I want to include my title block and we do this by importing and the template for the uh, title block I will share with you uh, the link will be put in the description I've made my own toolbar to quickly import the title block and if you look at that uh, command it says to import a certain file in this case the title block horizontal or the title block vertical in this case I'm going to import a horizontal one left clicking this is a, uh, a, a regular Rhino file that I made and all the lines and text are included in a block uh, so this is one, one block item a block instance now what's different about this particular Rhino file is that it is a block item with so-called user attribute texts attached to it and what this enables us is that all the information regarding your project can be included without really having to edit this block uh, so we can do that through the uh, user attribute text properties instead uh, so let's have a zoom in here so if this is the uh, general overview I would include that as a drawing name and as you can see it uh, will be included here in this case the project name is alias2 and then uh, of course the date you can fill in and any info about your address company name 
email, etc., gets included as well. In general, I include my initials here. And um, one other thing you see here is the scale with uh, for number signs. And you see this FX indicating that this is linked to text fields. So those text fields, in this case, the scale is set to the text field page scale. Now, if this page doesn't have that text field, uh, so I'm clicking outside of my page so that the, the layout itself is active. And then I click on layout user text and add my page scale user text here with a certain value. In this case, one to five. And then you will see that uh, that scale gets be gets transferred to the page. Now for this, I also made uh, scripts to uh, simplify that process a bit. And uh, the, these scripts are freely available on my GitHub page, similar to the, uh, the icons that I made for this toolbar. So what does this script do? In this case, if I don't include this uh, manually. I can do that with this page scale button. And uh, this brings up this dialog. Uh, I set the page scale. And as you can see, it adds that user text with the one to five value. And then clicking once in the viewport will update that. Now let's have a look at an alternative way to generate a 2D drawing without the use of Make2D. For that I will make a new layout page. Um, again, let's start, actually let's start with zero details and include one detail on the page like that just dragging it onto my sheet. And then I'll activate the sheet, select the objects that I want to keep in view. And now inverting my selection with invert, I'm choosing the command hide in detail. And so this will hide everything from the detail that I don't want to include in my drawing. And right now, I'll zoom in a bit and change this to a pen view. And then next, what I will do is I will make new orthogonal views based off this one. I did make scripts for that as well. Um, so if you want to do that, you can download the scripts and uh, include them in your own toolbar. Uh, so basically what that script is doing, I can uh, make orthogonal views this way. And then copy this one here and turn it into a perspective view. and zoom the view a little bit out, like that. Now, if you don't uh, use that script, uh, then it's also possible to do that process, but it requires a little bit of manual work. So we would just copy and paste these views, and then activate it, set it to front view and then this one set it to the right view okay so let's have a look at the scale of these 
So I'll set that one to five. And then these also. So now that, now that I have these details correct, I'll change them again to my details layer. And include my title block. Again, uh, my page scale set to 1 to 5. And of course, clicking on the title block layer and changing the attributes here. Once we have this, we can uh, include dimensions. And we'll do that using the drafting tools. So you can see, you can still snap to geometry in a very similar way. Like so. Once you start making drawings on your layouts, then you might want to include or exclude certain parts of the 3DM from this drawing. For example, in this case, uh, let's assume that I want only this part of the drawing into this detail. And there are several ways to achieve that. Uh, one of the ways is to enable the detail by double clicking and then hiding all the details, hiding all the layers that are not going to be part of this detail. So like this, you see this now reads detail on I click again it says layout on and these uh, parts of the layout layout manager are a little bit different from the Mac version uh, so on the Mac you will have this part separated out from the normal layout manager uh, compare that with going to perspective or top you will have only this part of the layout manager if I go to my layouts, you will notice that an extra part has been added that reads layout on or reads a detail on once you activate that particular detail. So this is one way. Another way could be that if I have, let's say, a detail that uh, includes multiple layers that I only partly want to show. Uh, so for example, the dimensions layer, I cannot turn off if I only want to display this one, if that is partly in the way. So another way to do that is by double clicking the detail selecting the parts that you want to include in this detail, invert your selection, and then use the hide in detail command. And so this will effectively um, only hide those parts from this particular detail only. On the Mac, the uh, layout system works slightly different. So you access it by choosing the layout here. And uh, all your layouts are organized in the uh, Sheets Manager here. So you don't have all the tabs on the lower end. You have the normal layer manager, as mentioned, and the 
layout layer manager as a separate part of the UI. Uh, so again, here you see it says layout bent angles lag. So that's layout and then the name of the layout page. And if I double click here, you get to see detail view top. So everything then relates to that particular detail.